I want to look at the day of the Lord and what the Bible teaches about the day of the Lord. So many people say that the day of the Lord includes the tribulation period plus the thousand year reign of Christ on earth. But the Bible will explain that it is a single day. Looking at the first mention of this in the Bible is in Isaiah chapter 2 and verse number 12. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty and upon everyone that is lifted up and he shall be brought low. Before that verse, you can read in verse 10, an interesting phrase that says, Enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust for the fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. For the lofty looks of man shall be humbled and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. That day is the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. That day is the second coming. That day is the day that the world is not looking forward to. That's the day that Revelation chapter number 6 records how men will cry out and they'll flee, they'll hide from the, the wrath of the Lamb for the day of his, of his wrath has come. And notice in verse 19 here it says about how they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for the fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. You see next to that I have Revelation chapter 6, 12 through 17. And that's what I referred to earlier. They're, they're going to, the Bible says here in verse 20, And that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they made each one for himself to worship, to the moles and to the bats, to go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks for the fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. This day is going to be an awesome day of destruction. It's going to be a day of great shaking. It's going to be a, a day of great fear the, for the people that are left during this time. The second mention of the day of the Lord is in Isaiah chapter 13 and verse number 6. I'm going to try to look quickly through all these references to the day of the Lord and see what surrounds that. Here in verse number 6, and I'll I'll read a few verses before that and just kind of get an idea of what's going on in these verses. God says in verse number 3, I've commanded my sanctified ones, I've called my mighty ones for mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. So these are, are the people of God, his mighty warriors. The Bible says the noise of a multitude in the mountains like as a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. They come from a far country, even, or from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his, his indignation to destroy the whole land. So it's going to be a day of destruction. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. So it's a verse number 9 goes on to say, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh both with wrath and fierce anger to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Also, you'll see about the sign, like back in Matthew 24, it talks about the sign where the sun and the moon is darkened. And here we have, and it's also mentioned a lot in Joel, but in verse 10 it says, For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. So many people today, I think of a man named Bill Maher, that in his arrogance and pride speaks out against God Almighty. And there's coming a day 
when the proud is and the arrogancy of the of the proud is going to cease and God is going to lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. You know, these people that think there's so much now, when they face God Almighty, if they live to this day, it's going to be an awful day of destruction. God is going to judge this world like it never thought it would be judged. In verse number 13, here it says, Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger, there's going to be, he talk about some global change, some global climate change. Well, this is going to change. This will be an unbelievable time, an earthquake that was never before seen in this world where the, the mountains will be laid low, the islands will be covered up and moved out of their places. It's going to be a day of destruction from the, the Lord Almighty. Now, so these are the next two mentions, and then we can go to Isaiah chapter 34 and verse number 8 for the next mention of the day of the Lord. Isaiah 34, and we'll just look real quick here at the beginning of Isaiah 34. It says in verse 2, For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. The slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. All the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall roll together as a scroll, and all the host shall fall down, as a leaf falleth from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. And it's, you just can't help but glean from this as you look at the day of the Lord. It's constantly referring to the, the host of heaven and the sun and moon being dark and heavens being rolled up like a scroll and just the anger, the fierce anger of the Lord God. And down in verse 8 is we want to get to. God said he has a sacrifice in Basra, a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. Verse 8 says, For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of his, of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. From generation to generation it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. So the next... Next mention of the day of the Lord is found in Jeremiah chapter 46. Jeremiah chapter 46 and verse number 10. The Bible says, For this is the day of the Lord God of hosts, a day of vengeance, that he may avenge him of his adversaries. And the sword shall devour, and it sh shall be satiate and made drunk with their blood, for the Lord God of hosts hath a sacrifice in the north country by the river Euphrates. Well, what a time, what a time it's going to be. People that side against the Lord, all their pride and arrogancy is going to be taken away and their blood will be spilt. Ezekiel 30 and verse number 3 is the next mention we see of the day of the Lord. The Bible says, Look at verse 2. Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord God, How ye, woe worth the day, for the day is near, even the day of the Lord is near, a cloudy day, it shall be the time of the heathen. It isn't going to be a good time for the heathen either, but God is going to judge the heathen. Next mention of the day of the Lord is in Joel 1.15. One fifteen. Alas for the day, the day of the Lord is at hand, and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Down in chapter 2, verse 1, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy, mount, or holy mountain. 
Let the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. As you read down through here, it's like the burning pitch that was left after the sacrifice in Basra. You have a great people and a strong, never been alike, and a fire devoureth before them, verse 3, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. As we look down through here, we get down to verse number 10. It says, The earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Again, that's the sign. That's what we're looking for for the day of the Lord. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, and his, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Well, who can abide it? No one. There is no one that is going to stand up against this great day. As we look down through, we come to the, the next mention of the day of the Lord. And still in chapter 2, verse 30 says, And I will show wonders in the heavens and the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And we get down to, to where the, the battle of Armageddon is going to take place. And God says, Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen. Gather yourselves together round about. Cause, thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened. And boy, they're woke today, aren't they? Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I set to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full. The vats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. The Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. Next mention is over in Amos chapter 5. Verse 18 says, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him and went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the, the, day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it? I'll flip over to Obadiah. Obadiah. Chapter 1, verse 15. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall turn, return upon thine own head. And Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse number 7. says, Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord, for the day of the Lord is at hand. For the Lord hath prepared a sacrifice, he hath bid his guest, and it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. And looking down at verse 14, 
down through verse 18. The word of God says, The great day of the Lord is near. It is near it and hasteth greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men, and they shall walk like blind men, because they have sinned against the Lord, and their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as the dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath, but the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. Doesn't sound like a day you want to be here. I know I don't want to be here. I know I'm not going to be here. Thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God the merciful God of heaven provided a way of salvation. And if you'll just but put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, you can be saved. We're nearing the end of this thing. And this day is coming. This day is as sure as, as what you're breathing right at this moment. That day is going to come. Zechariah 14, verse 1. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. There is, probably isn't a soul in America that doesn't know about Armageddon, heard about it. They may not know biblically what it truly means, but Hollywood's put enough stuff out there. And Armageddon, when you hear the word Armageddon, you know it's the end coming. But when you hear the day of the Lord, you ought to realize that's, that's the end. That's the end is coming. Here, at the very end of the Old Testament, it says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. It's interesting that the last word in the Old Testament is curse. The Bible says, Cursed, you know, cursed is the man that doeth not all the things that are written in the law. None of us can fulfill the law. We're all cursed. We're all under God's condemnation. We're all guilty before God. We've sinned. We've broken the commandments of God, but the Lord Jesus became a curse for us. The Bible says, cursed, is, cursed are all they that hang on a tree. And the Lord Jesus became sin for us, and he took God's judgment, God's wrath, so that we don't have to suffer at the wrath of God. And if you're lost this day of, of the Lord, if you're here at the end and you suffer that time, you're not going to live through that. You will be destroyed. You will be killed. But the sad thing is beyond that, there's a hell for eternity. There's a lake of fire that awaits those that reject this great God, the one that gave us the Lord Jesus Christ, the one that became the Lord Jesus Christ. And he died on a cross. And thank God for the mercy that's available, the forgiveness that's available through the Lord Jesus Christ today. I just wanted to look really quick that about the day of the Lord. Many people teach that it's a long period of time, but clearly by just looking at these scriptures, just very quickly, just not taking much time at all to look over them, it's clear that it is a single day. And it's a day that will come at the end when the sun and the moon is darkened. And over in Matthew 24, the Bible clearly says, one of my favorite passages of Scripture, the Bible says immediately, verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from the heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. That's the second coming. And that's where God's going to take people away in judgment. 
And if you're not saved and you're there, it's going to be a awful, unimaginable time. So that's the day of the Lord. I'm looking for the, the rapture seven years prior for that day of the Lord. So we'll be, when the day of the Lord comes, I'll already be in heaven with the Lord Jesus for seven years, just waiting to come back and see Christ destroy the armies of this world and take the kingdoms of this world and they'll become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ. And there won't be no more Joe Biden in the White House. There won't be no more Vladimir Putin in Russia. There won't be any world leaders that have their own little kingdom. It'll be the Lord Jesus Christ ruling and reigning and the saints of God ruling and reigning with him. And it'll be a glorious time be a time like we can't even imagine for 1,000 years. Try to imagine that. Wrap your mind around that one. But, but that's it. Just want to look at the day of the Lord. What a time it's, it's coming.